Hi everyone, welcome to another video of this channel. So over the past year, I've been a part of the MIT Primes program, where high schoolers can conduct mentored research in mathematics, present their research at a conference, and eventually get their research published. And I will post the link to the MIT Primes website, as well as my paper, which was posted on archive.org, in the description. And one of the admission requirements for this program is to submit your solutions to an entrance problem set. So today I will be sharing with you my solution to problem 6 from the 2023 MIT Primes problem set. So for some background, let's suppose we have the following graph on 7 nodes in this case. And let's label them. Um, and this is a tree, right? So there is exactly one path that does not repeat any edge more than once from one node to another. One of the convenient ways in which we can represent this tree is using a proofer code. And what a proofer code essentially is, is it's a list of numbers. So first, we start with the smallest leaf on the tree. A leaf is only connected to one other node. In this case, this is two. What we do is we cross out two, we cross out the edge that is connected to, and we write down the number of the node that it was connected to, which in this case is three. Next, we find the second smallest leaf. In this case, five, six, and seven are the leaves. Five is the smallest leaf. We cross it out, and we write down the node it was connected to, which is one. We do the same thing for six. We write one again. Now, one is a leaf. We'll cross it out because the only other leaf is seven, which is bigger, and write down three. And then finally, we'll write down four because we cross out three. And this is the end of the prover code. Basically, the end result is two nodes connected by a single edge. And we just demonstrated that, I mean, on an example, but this is true in general, that every tree can be written as a proofer code, right? And there is only one proofer code for every tree. That's not too hard to see. It also turns out that the proofer code defines a tree. And I will demonstrate this. So first of all, we know that because this proofer code has five entries, the tree has seven nodes in total, right? The proofer code always has exactly two less nodes than the tree does. First of all, we know that the smallest leaf is connected to three. So this right here is the smallest leaf, and this is the number, the node 3. Now the next two smallest leaves are connected to the node 1. So these are the next two smallest leaves. And uh, the smallest leaf that was initially crossed out must be 2 because it's the only number that is less than 3. Now we see that 3 appears again, which means that after these two right here have been crossed out, right after these two leaves have been crossed out, one is a leaf, and it must be connected to three. And now four appears, meaning that once we crossed out all of these and one, once it becomes a leaf, right? Three is now a leaf, so it must be connected to four because four is the next entry that appears. And then we have six nodes so far out of our seven, and the seventh node right here must be connected to the four. Um, and here must be the five, and the 6, because these are smaller than 7, and the 7 goes in the final node. So this is just an example, but it is true in general that you can derive the tree from the proofer code. And before we move on, a really neat application of this is Cayley's formula. And Cayley's formula says that the number of trees on n vertices, so the number of trees is equal to n to the n minus 2. And this is because there are n minus 2 entries in the prover code for any tree on n nodes. And each of these n minus 2 entries can have any of the values from 1 through n. Therefore, they're exactly n to the n minus 2 trees. So as we clearly see, prover codes are a very, very useful notion. And we are going to be heavily using them in the solution to the sixth problem on the 2023 MIT Primes entrance set. So the problem is, how many ways are there to extend a tree TM on the vertices 1 through M to T 
TN, which is a tree on n vertices, like this, where n is greater than m. In other words, if we have some sort of tree TM, how many ways can we add n minus m new nodes so that the resulting graph is also a tree? So this is the problem. And to start, we're going to visualize it. All right, so this is TM, and we are going to add n minus m nodes to form TN. So we're going to add n minus m nodes, and let's also say that there's going to be a couple of nodes, right, out of these n minus m nodes that are actually connected to a node of TM. And let's call these the connecting nodes. So these right here are the connecting nodes. Let's say there are k of them. And these k connecting nodes connect the m vertices of the tree, TM, to the n minus m minus k remaining nodes. So this right here is m minus m nodes. So before we attack this problem, first of all, we're going to contract this tree TM to a single node 0. And it'll become clear why this is useful later. But once we do this, there's really two major questions that we have to ask. So for k connecting nodes, how many trees with n minus m plus 1 nodes are there where 0 has degree k? So what this first question is asking is once we contract tm to 0, right, we get a new tree that has the n minus m added nodes plus the node 0, so n minus m plus 1 total nodes. And basically, how many ways can there be exactly k nodes that are connecting to 0? And the second question is, of course, once we connect the n minus m nodes to 0, how many ways are there to actually get the m vertices of tm to connect to the connecting nodes? So once we answer these two questions for k connecting nodes, we can multiply the answers of these two questions together and then add all of them up for each possible amount of connecting nodes. So now that we have a pretty simple formula for how to approach this problem, let's start with the first question. And to answer it, we will look at the proof or code for the contracted tree. It has n minus m plus 1 nodes, right? The n minus 1 new nodes to form tn plus the node 0. So it's going to have n minus 1 entries in the proof or code. And what we're going to do is we're going to split this up into two sub questions. How many of these are going to be 0 and how many of these are going to be non-zero? So because 0 has degree k, there's going to be exactly k minus 1 zeros in the proof or code. And the reason for this, right, is let's suppose this red vertex right here is 0. And let's suppose it's connected to the connecting nodes. So let's suppose that the smallest leaf is going to be on this connecting node. And eventually we cross a bunch of leaves off the nodes, right? And then eventually, right, let's say we crossed off everything off of this rightmost branch. And now this is a leaf, right? So it gets crossed off. And 0 gets written down in the proof of code. Then let's say we cross everything off of this branch right here. Now, this is a leaf. It gets crossed off and write down 0 in the proof of code. But now, look at what happens. 0 becomes a leaf because it's only connected to just one of the last connecting nodes. And 0 is obviously the smallest label. So we're going to cross off 0 and we're going to write down the number of the last connecting node. Therefore, there's going to be exactly k minus 1 zeros in the proof of code. So now we're going to determine how many ways there are to arrange the zeros. And there's going to be n minus m minus 1 entries in the proof of code, k minus 1 zeros. So n minus m minus 1, choose k minus 1 ways to arrange the zeros. Now let's look at the non-zero entries. Exactly n minus m minus k are going to be non-zero. There are n minus m total non-zero labels in the contracted tree. And each of the n minus m minus k non-zero entries in the proof of code can have any of these n minus m non-zero labels. Therefore, there's n minus m to the n minus m minus k total ways to place the non-zero labels. Therefore, the answer to this question right here, right, how many ways can 0 has degree k in the contracted tree is n minus m minus 1, choose k minus 1, times n minus m to the n minus m minus k. 
So now let's answer the second question. And that is how to join the nodes of TM to the connecting nodes. How many ways are there to do that? So each of the connecting nodes can connect to one node of the tree, right? If any connecting node connects to two nodes of TM, then it's no longer a tree because there's a loop. So there are going to be exactly M to the K total ways to connect the M vertices of TM to the K nodes in this case. And now, if there are K connecting nodes, we know there's exactly M to the K times N minus M minus 1, choose K minus 1, times N minus M to the N minus M minus K, total ways to extend TM to TN. But of course, K can range from 1 to all the way up to N minus M. Therefore, we're going to add this summation sign to get the total number of ways to extend TM to TN. And now all we have to do is just evaluate this summation. Now, of course, we have this combination, and we have two things raised to some power. And this automatically gives off some sort of binomial theorem flavor. So let's try to get this to an expression where we can apply the binomial theorem. First, we're going to re-index everything. Now notice that this and this right here are the same number, so we just got one step closer to applying the binomial theorem. And the indexing starts with zero. So now what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to pull one of these m's out of the summation, because it's a constant. And we're also going to substitute p equals n minus m minus 1, just to make this easier to read. So this is going to be the sum from k equals 0 to p of p choose k times n minus m to the p minus k times m to the k, and we're going to have a factor of m in front. And now this summation is exactly the binomial theorem. So this is going to be m times n to the p. And now we just plug in p, and we finally get our answer of m times n to the n minus m minus 1 total ways to extend tm to tn. Thank you for watching.